friends. Welcome back to La Princess Siren. Um, it's been a little while. As you can see, I'm in a new space. I moved last year and I've had a lot of other things going on, so that's why you haven't really heard from me in a while. Um, but I'm back with a new project, first sewing project in the new house. Um, and today's project is a really nostalgic one for me. Um, as I'm sure many of you may know, if you clicked on this video, Phantom of the Opera will be closing on Broadway in the spring, which is very sad for me because 15-year-old Amanda was obsessed with Phantom. This was the show that got me into musicals, into theater, into sewing, Victorian dresses. It's something that's really meant a lot to me over the years, and me as a teenager, I was just obsessed. Like, I wanted everything in Christine's wardrobe, I tried making some of her dresses with my limited teenage sewing skills, and they were a valiant effort for what I could do at the time, but they definitely fall short of looking Broadway stage worthy. So all this to say, um, I have a ticket to go see the show one last time before it goes, and to see it out with a bang, I've decided I'd like to make a dress from the show, which I haven't done in like 10 years, <laughs> and um, wear that to go see it. So that is going to be this project. It's going to be a big long one because they are very complicated costumes. So let's go. So after thinking it over, I decided to go with her wishing gown. This is the blue Victorian dress she wears in the graveyard scene, and I think it's absolutely beautiful. I love this dress. And it will also have a lot of rewearability as a Victorian dress for historical events, which is nice. Um, luckily for me, there's now a plethora of options for purchasing this fabric on Spoonflower. And after browsing all the options, I settled on this one in the organic cotton sateen and ordered 12 yards. This ended up being a few yards more than I actually needed, but for some insane reason, I was utterly convinced I was going to run out of fabric. So you don't need that much. <laughs> With my fabric on the way, it's time to start thinking about the exact design that I want to do. So this show's been running on Broadway for 35 years and even longer in London, so there's been a lot of variation in exactly how this dress gets made. And I compiled a bunch of research photos and cherry-picked all of the details that I would like to use for my version which will be mostly based on the Broadway version of the dress, but with a few tweaks, like rounding out the neckline more like the London version, and a few other small things for personal taste. And as mine will not need to be put on in a speedy quick change, I will be doing it in a more historically accurate-ish method. I will have a separate underskirt, overskirt, and bodice, and I'll be closing the bodice in the front because I don't need to have that zipper up the back, and that way I will be able to dress myself, which is nice. And while I wait for my fabric to arrive, time to start patterning and getting ready to make this happen. <laughs> so here's what I've been up to for trying to make a pattern. I made a copy of the paper pattern for another Victorian bodice that I made and just taped it all together, started making changes to make it look more like Christine's dress. Um, as you can see from all of my colored lines, I've been having a little bit of a tricky time figuring out this front vest piece, but I think we're almost there and then I'm gonna make a final copy again uh, to make a nice one to start cutting fabric out with. But we'll probably do a mock-up first just to be sure Everything's fine because this is a little, uh, <laughs> janky. So to just demonstrate again flat what I'm doing, um, I took this paper pattern from the last Victorian dress I did, taped the pieces together, put them on the dress form, drew out my lines, and then took it back off, flattened it back out, so I could cut this into individual pieces. So this is just these two pieces taped together into a different shape and then I copied that out into a nice version of the pattern with a separate copy of the collar so that hopefully this will be nice and easy to cut out. Okay so here is the mock-up. I'm pretty happy with how it's fitting. 
Uh, I made some changes to make this just a flat piece, unlike in the last dress I made. Um, and I obviously changed the whole front. Um, I think I like the neckline. It's going to go out just a smidge because the seam allowance is still on here. And I'm happy with this curve. Um, I do think I might extend here because I like kind of where it's sitting, but it currently has an inch seam allowance on it. And I feel like that just doesn't look as good to me. So I might extend that a little. And then that's really the only change I want to make. So I should be ready to start cutting things out. Uh, I'll be honest guys, I'm pretty scared to cut this fabric. Um, this is the most I've ever personally spent on fabric before, and I am afraid to cut it. So I think what I'm going to do is start with the underskirt, because if I make any mistakes, half of it's going to be mostly covered up anyway, and then maybe I will think about attempting to uh, pattern match the bodice. <laughs> That is going to be tricky. So I'm going to cut my big uh, skirt pieces first and see how that goes as a test run. bit of cutting first, and I did not panic too much. Um, next is to figure out uh, cutting the bodice pieces, which is going to be probably the hardest thing, but I haven't patterned the overskirt pieces yet, and I'd really like to get a start on the bodice, so we're just going to get that out of the way. But first I want to sit and really analyze um, the pattern direction on each of the pieces because I don't want to screw that up. I have a little bit extra fabric, but I don't want to recut things if I don't have to. And because the pattern is so large and so distinct, I want to make sure that I get the correct part of the pattern going in the correct direction on every piece. <laughs> Try to get it right the first time. Um, so yeah, we're gonna just sit and analyze some production photos for a bit. <laughs> Okay, so before starting to cut any of my good fabric, I wanted to sit and look at the direction that the fabric pattern goes on different parts of the dress to make sure I get that correct. Um, so I'm, I've got a few pictures up here just to study. So we can see from this first one, her sleeve seems to just go straight up and down as do both of the overskirt pieces, which is nice and easy. The side front, though, appears to be on a diagonal, which is good to note. It's a little hard to see on the next picture over, but I believe it looks like the side piece is straight up and down. It's so skinny, though, it's a little hard to tell. I'm going to say it goes straight. If we look at the back here, you can see pretty clearly that the stripe kind of does this, which means it's cut straight and then the meeting of the seams on the side seams here kind of makes it do this little bloop bloop in the back. Uh, last couple things, the underskirt Looks like it's also up and down. You can kind of see in the mirror over there. 
Um, and the waterfall drapery in the back is doing, this is our center back. It's making little chevron shapes. So we'll have to figure out exactly what that looks like. So you can see how it's kind of going the opposite way when it folds back. So I think when we make our pattern, we can lay that out and look at what direction that needs to get cut. Um, but mostly everything just goes straight up and down, which is pretty easy. Just have to make sure that we pattern match as best as we can. And yeah, wish me luck. So on um, closer examination, starting with the front piece, it looks like on my photo, the skinny stripe starts in this front corner and kind of goes up to the armpit. So that means this needs to get cut on the bias. I'm trying to figure out exactly what orientation of this stripe will look good. But I'm trying to use my photo as a reference for what goes where so I can see that the skinny stripe is kind of on the side and the wider stripe with the big flowers kind of goes through the middle of the piece. So I'm going to fuss around with this a little more before I cut it out and I'll cut one, see how it looks, and then I'll cut a matching one. Uh, yeah. Okay, so here's my single cutout front piece, and unfortunately the darts kind of break up the design a bit, but I can't think of a way around this without making the bodice less shaped. And I'm guessing that the reason why I'm getting this much distortion in the fabric is because I have two fairly sizable-ish darts, and let's be honest, all of the actresses they cast for Broadway tend to be on the less curvy side, so maybe that just makes it less noticeable, or I'm doing this completely differently, who knows, but I think this is the best I'm going to get. I've got this flower section more or less uninterrupted, so I'm going to be happy with that and carry on. So again, to cut my second piece, what I've done is take the first one I cut and just lay it on top of the fabric backwards. And as you can see, I've been very careful to try to match the design. Um, I've even tried to match these larger flowers with about the same section of flower design because it's quite large and I feel like it might be noticeable if they don't match. So I've used things like the little flowers and the stripes to try to match it up exactly so that this piece should be a perfect mirror of the other one. So this is generally the technique I'm going to be using to uh, cut the rest of my pieces as I go. To lay out the center back pieces, I marked the center of the floral part of the pattern and lined up the center back seam on that. This will help me to keep the center back seam perfectly centered on the floral design when I go to cut the second piece. I'm also using my pattern without any built-in seam allowance, so I'll be able to see exactly where my stitch line is for precise pattern matching. Alright friends, I'm going to show you my personal little hack for figuring out how to make the pattern line up across several pieces. Um, so because I want to carry this stripe over so that you'll see this line carry into here, 
what I do is on my paper pattern piece, get this lined up and then mark with a pencil kind of where my pattern goes. And then I'll be able to see kind of where that lines up with my side piece. So I assure you this is not terribly precise. <laughs> So this is kind of a approximation of the pattern on this piece. So what I'm going to do is line it up with my paper pattern for my side back. I'm going to, maybe I'll start down here, mark kind of where the pattern should meet. So if this is my stripey line, I kind of need it to hit just at the corner here. And then as this carries around, I need the other side of my dotty line to kind of hit here. Same thing at the top. This line wants to carry down. And then presumably I need a flowery bit here. So then I can use these marks to try to line this up on the fabric and hopefully get a nice pattern match down the side back seam. All right, now we're going to watch this in action. So here's my dotted lines for lining things up. I can see I need to match here, here. And this might be a little tricky and I might not be able to get it perfectly, but I would love to get it really close because that would make me very happy. So I want to double check here what we've got. So I'm going to super overthink this and because there's a leaf here I want my next thing to be a flower here and I'd like to catch this large motif carrying on this way which it's currently not doing exactly where I have it. So, let's see, I think if we move it up a little bit, now let's see, all right, we're getting there. I'm going to fiddle with this some more and then cut pieces. I also cut a big pocket to add to the skirt and started putting things together. 
The skirt is the same one I previously used for my ice skating dress, so I'm going to skip over the basic construction part, and if you want to know how I did it, please pause here and check out that video first. Okay, these are my ribbon rolls, just come in from eBay. They each have about 100 yards of ribbon on them, so that ought to be plenty. I got a light blue and a navy blue to do all of my trimming with. And then I'll have to figure out what the heck to do with all the leftovers, because holy cow, is that a lot of ribbon. The underskirt hem has five rows of ribbon trim, alternating between the navy and light blue. To put it on, I didn't pin anything and just lined it up a little bit at a time as I stitched it. I also only stitched the top of the ribbon and figure it should stay in place well enough without having to stitch both sides of every ribbon. There's so much ribbon to put on and I don't want to use more thread than I really need to. And after it's all on, I just gave it a good press to smooth it all out and that's done. One piece pretty much finished. The underskirt is all ready to go, but it was the easiest piece, so now on to the hardest piece. Huzzah! So that's it for this week. Um, this is a super involved project. It's going to be a multiple part video series. This is honestly one of the most complicated dresses I've ever made. And I don't want to rush the process just to try to fit it into one reasonable length video. So stay tuned and there will be more on this project coming up.